Since my first video on how to make $100 a day doing BPO's broker price opinions, I've gotten several requests to do this video. Now, whether you guys are doing a broker price opinion for a BPO company, or maybe it's because you're gonna be taking an REO listing, a foreclosure listing, this video will go into detail on exactly what to do to complete a broker price opinion. What's up everybody, my name is Steve. I talk about real estate, investing, personal finance with a path toward financial freedom. So let's just go ahead and dive into this. The BPO really consists of nine necessary steps. The first one is the site inspection. Now I did a complete video on this as I mentioned, it's how to make $100 a day doing broker price opinions. Be sure to check that video out. I'll put a link down below as well as the uh, card at the end for you guys so you can check that out. But that's gonna actually talk about how to go about getting broker price opinion assignments. And it's gonna talk about the process of actually doing the BPO site visit. Now once the site inspection is complete, you're gonna go back to your office. Hopefully you knocked out a handful at once so your time is efficient and effective. But uh, you're gonna get back to the office and you're gonna perform the actual BPO analysis Many times BPO companies, they have their own internal site where you're actually gonna input into the site. Um, so I'm gonna just use screenshots for the sake of doing so right now because a lot of the sites are different, but it's pretty much all, all comparable, all the same. One tip that I got for you guys as well, if they do have an option to save as you're going throughout, be sure to do that. Uh, there have been a handful of times when we were doing BPOs and we lost power or internet connection and erased all of our hard work. So be sure you save throughout the process. All right, once you're logged into the system for that appropriate BPO company, there's usually five components to the actual submission for the BPO. There are general market conditions. Uh, you got the actual subject property, the details about the subject property. You got your three active comparables. You got your three sold comparables. And then obviously your price price range, what you think it should be valued at. So let's talk about market conditions. So this is usually gonna talk about um, the actual price of the properties in the area. Are they going up in value? Are they decreasing in value? Are they remaining stable? Um, this is also gonna talk about the supply. Is there a normal supply, an oversupply? Uh, maybe there's a shortage of listings in the area, <clears throat> more of a seller's market. Um, approximately the number of comparable units in the neighborhood, as well as, um, you know, are there any other competing distressed properties of REO properties? The next section is the details of the subject property. Now, this is going to include, you know, if the property is over improved or if it's appropriate for the neighborhood. Um, on average, how many days on market these properties are selling for? What type of property is it? Uh, whether it's a single family, a condo, and so forth. Um, it's also gonna ask for the actual details of the property, which you'll see in the active and closed sales, so you can line it up appropriately with the uh, description of uh, square footage and um, the upgrades associated with the property. They're also gonna wanna know some details about the property itself, what kind of condition it was in. Uh, if you look at that other video that we spoke about during the inspection period, they're gonna require whether it's gonna be an interior BPO or an exterior. Exterior is usually somebody's living there and um, they're gonna just have you essentially take pictures of the outside, do a drive-by essentially. The interior BPO is gonna get more detailed on the actual condition of the inside, which you'll notate in this system as well. All right, the next section is the competitive sold comparables. In most cases, they're gonna limit this to three sold comps. Now, this is where it gets kind of tedious. We're gonna have to input into every field from the square footage to the days on market, to the uh, upgrades associated with it, whether it was uh, had a pool or waterfront or any kind of special upgrades to the property, you're gonna have to fill this out for three good sold comparable properties. Now in this section, you have to make sure that these comps are very good comparables. If not, and we'll talk a little bit more in detail, but the BPO assignor, they will kick this back if you guys are not using rel relative comparables for this, uh, this BPO. The next section is the competitive listings. They're gonna request at least three active competition properties that are currently on the market. Again, it's a bit tedious. You're gonna have to fill in the information from the square footage, days on market, and all the other details that you can see on this screenshot. And now the last section of this is the actual market value, what you think the property would sell for. And in many cases, they'll ask for kind of three different valuations. It's as is value, maybe after it's been repaired or fixed up, 
and a 30 day quick sale to just broom the property and get rid of it. Now again, the BPO companies, they're providing a service many times to the bank, banking institutions, whether that bank is doing a short sale or maybe it's an upcoming foreclosure. So there's many times that the banks are gonna wanna hire somebody to do BPOs because it does save them a lot of cost, a lot of money, as opposed to hiring somebody to do an appraisal. So in the short sale scenario, they're gonna to wanna to get an idea, usually after they've actually received an offer for the short sale, they gotta get an idea of if that offer price is pretty comparable to the open market. Other times they order the BPO for um, somebody that's currently in default. A lot of times those are the drive-by BPOs. So they're not necessarily a short sale candidate. They might have a Liz pendants, a pending foreclosure. So the bank is just trying to get a general idea of valuation. Now keep in mind, doing the BPO is a, a tedious job and it, it can get kind of boring over time, especially if you're doing a lot of these. But you have to keep in mind, this is an important part of the process. These BPO companies, they do have uh, people in house that are actually doing desktop analysis. So if your property, let's say you use a sold comp and it's you know a year out, they're probably gonna kick that comp back unless that's really the only kind of comparable you can use. Um, there usually are comment sections that you can put as well. So if you're limited and having a tough time trying to comp out a property and you need to go outside of the region, outside of the area, or you need to use a comp that's a bit older, make sure you notate that because a lot of times they're gonna see that it sold a year ago and they're just gonna kick it back. Um, also, a lot of times they do set up rating systems. So if you're if your BPOs get kicked back on a frequent basis, you might be less likely to get more BPO assignments. And if you're doing a great job, then um, I encourage you and take a look at that first video as well. I encourage you guys to reach out to these BPO companies, explain that you've been doing BPOs for that company and to see if they you could be maybe a priority uh, realtor to handle a uh, majority of the BPOs in your area. Guys, I know BPOs can be very tedious and they could also lead to getting even foreclosure listings. So don't be afraid to reach out and ask them if they deal with asset managers or if they do assign REO listings. This could be a good foot in the door depending on the company. Uh, many times if a bank is doing an internal BPO, those people a lot of times, depending on the size of the bank, do handle the actual assets, do handle the disbursement of assets to get them listed on open market. So be sure you're getting on the phones, not just emailing or whatever. Get on the phones and call these people because it could be the difference of you getting more BPO assignments, maybe even some REO listings as well. Um, in any case, check out the video that I did uh, making $100 a day uh, doing BPO assignments. And I do appreciate you guys watching this. I appreciate the support. If you have any questions, leave them down below and I'll do my best to uh, respond in a timely manner. Thanks a lot.